All right, greetings everybody. This is Jay Helix again. Uh, continuing with our LT4 install series. So I have been getting quite a few parts in. Uh, I've had the supercharger here for a little while. Um, you can see that I got some boxes. I got some of our parts. Um, got one more I'm waiting on. It should be coming in today. So we'll be getting some more videos coming out with the actual install. And what this video really wanted to do was just, uh, I want to do, so, so I just got this in, I kind of, well, honestly, I got it in a little while ago, and um, what I wanted to do is just do a visual inspection of the supercharger. So with uh, the supercharger, it's got 40,000 miles on it, came off of a 2015 Z06, <coughs> excuse me, that I talked about in some of the previous videos, and the, um, um, you know, once I got it in, I wanted to do a visual inspection on it. There, there are some things <clears throat> on these superchargers that, um, you know, people kind of complain about. You know, one of them being the, uh, the coupler that's inside the snout. When you pull off the snout, uh, there's, a, there's a coupler in there that is spring-loaded and that uh, over time it, it uh, begins to rattle, make some noise at different RPMs. And actually when you pull the snout off on some of those, it it has uh, some wear marks in the, in the shaft so that's one thing we're going to be looking at but i'm not going to do it in this video it'll be coming up when we do the pulley change but in this video i just kind of wanted to go off of you know what gm recommends for a, for a uh, a visual inspection there's not too much that they they offer because this really isn't a field serviceable part but i uh, figured it's a good idea just to go ahead and take a visual inspection on it before we get too uh, too far into the, the process with installing it. So I, I went ahead and covered lids in the last video and put a lift on this guy. You know, one thing that uh, they want you to check here is your charge air bypass valve. <clears throat> um, just make sure that it can, can open and close, which you can see here, it's, it works really well. Uh, you know, we probably could put a vacuum pump on that and, and test it. Uh, more thoroughly but uh, the one note I wanted to make is this adjustment screw down here so uh, GM actually recommends not to adjust that you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I have to make the assumption at this point that you know since the lifetime of the previous owner they, they didn't have anybody adjust this it has got some looks like thread lock on there but um, you know I imagine people do adjust it to try to get some more performance out of it but I won't be doing it for this guy so that's one thing they, they recommend to check is that you know it doesn't bind up it moves pretty freely which is good i'm um, assuming that uh either this guy had a catch can on on his vehicle on a, on a z06 or he just cleaned it up when he um before he shipped it because it's inside here it's as you can see it's it's pretty clean there's not um any oil in here that you'd normally see um let's see another thing that um gm recommends is the uh, the rotor so this is a four lobe a root style rotor that's made by Eaton you know obviously the whole supercharger is made by Eaton um, I believe if I remember correctly at the specs it's not Teflon coated uh, they just have really tight clearance uh, but one thing GM recommends is that you uh, turn this thing by hand and it should rotate freely and not make any any noise which that's pretty good we're not getting anything noise and not getting any noise out of the bearing. I believe there's, uh, I think, two bearings on this shaft. You got the coupler inside, and then um, you have, I think, two bearings or so that are on one of these lobes. So you just want to make sure that you know they're not squealing on you. And obviously, <laughs> you know, doing this by hand, you're not going to get, you're not going to hit all the the uh, RPM ranges and go up to. You, but at least by hand, it's it seems to be working. It's it's turning freely. The thing can spin up 20,000 RPMs, and I, I think shops that service these things, they do have probably motors that they can hook a bell to up and, and spin this up across that entire RPM range and make sure that uh, there's nothing going on. Uh, but over, you know, overall, just looking at this thing, it's 40,000 miles. You know, it's not not in too bad a shape. Um, the coolant manifold here, so you can. It, it, I'm not sure if it got dropped here. I think this is where the quick connects disconnects go on and. It looks like it did have a cap, but it, that one came off. And maybe this one got dropped or hit and cut out that middle section. So that's a little bit damaged in there. Um, probably see in there too, a little bit bent. But you know, it's not too major. You know, the, the actual fitting part looks to be in good shape. 
So I think we'll be good there. And if I really wanted to, I could probably get a, a round file and go in there and clean that up a little bit. And if worse comes to worse, I can always just unbolt this uh, coolant manifold here and, and replace it. So yeah, that's, uh, there it looks pretty good. Um, you know, the gasket surface looks pretty good um, on this thing. You know, one GM has got a very, uh, they have uh, very strong warnings about, you know, gasket services and cleaning them. You know, they're, they strongly recommend not using blades or anything sharp, even um, any type of power tools. You know, normally I have, a, I got a gasket remover that goes on my air tools or my, um, my drill. But I go in there for like bearings and stuff and clean them up. But GM actually recommends not doing that on, on surfaces that deal with air and, and oil and fuel, uh, mainly because you can uh, microscopically change the flatness of these surfaces and uh, cause small leaks. So it, it looks like looking at this guy, it's you know, I don't really see anything. Get this light on here. Really don't see any nasty grooves or, or marks so that's that's good and we will be reusing the uh the seal that's on the lid for now because i'll have to take it off and the next phase when we do the uh, fuel upgrade you know the see it looks like the lobes themselves and you know, they do have some you can see some wear on there which is probably normal for something that has this many miles on it um so, I mean, the bricks, you know, that's do see a little ding there, but the louvers inside, they, they seem to be good for the most part. Um, when we actually get ready to, before we install this, I'm going to come in here and clean it up again and you know, wash it down and get it all nice. Um, back here is where the rear uh, T-map goes, the temperature and manifold absolute pressure sensor. So this guy's got... Um, Born in the back, and I do have that. We'll, we'll install that at some point in time. Uh, let's see up here. We got the. This is where. The, so that's the the outlet map is back there, and the the inlet map is is here. So this is the pressure um, before it goes in the supercharger and and gets um, compressed. And then there's the uh, other map sensor back here. That's out the outlet. So after the air is compressed, you know, doing the, the pressure there. And I'm not sure if GM uses that. To, uh, to, to since this, this uh, charge air charge bypass valve is um, is an electronic uh, it's vacuum and electronically controlled I'm not sure if you know part of their the logic for that is to use these two sensors to determine when to switch on the electronic part and open this up a little bit for high boost situations uh, there, there might be some of that but you know all these surfaces for the most part they look look pretty good uh, let me move this camera down a little bit so you guys can see. There we go. All right, so looking at the uh, kind of the side here, uh, so you can see here, this is where the gasket maker so it kind of came out when they squished it together. So this is the snout. When we get ready to do the pulley, we're going to have to pull this guy off there's some bolts here um, to do this correctly but you know these services they look they look pretty good uh, see believe this is the purge solenoid I think it is that goes here we're actually going to use this off of the stock L83 put that on there <coughs> um, this is like I said where the inlet map sensor goes I do have a, a block out plug from ICT that I can put on there I was thinking about purchasing the, the map sensor to put on this guy and then wiring up the uh, E92 ECM for its inputs, but unfortunately, uh, the pinouts, the three connector pinouts on my L83 uh, ECM, ECM and the LT4, even though they're both L92 or E92 ECMs, the pinouts are different. So they're exp the, the the operating system that runs on, uh, or the firmware that runs on the E92 uh, is expecting different signals on these inputs. So unfortunately, I can't easily just swap those over. So I might look into that in the future. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and block this guy off. But uh, overall, you know, those, those look good. Uh, over here, we got our throttle body, um, maiden surface. It looks pretty good. I'm probably going to use that gasket. It doesn't look like it's in very bad shape. 
And then again, going back to, um, let me pull this camera up again, going back to the air charge bypass valve, um, you know, I, I am probably gonna just for now, uh, make this only vacuum operated and just get rid of the, the solenoid. You can see it, the solenoid's actually already been removed. But looking at the pinouts between the LT4 E92 and the L83 E92, uh, that those are there are some unused. The pins that it needs are unused. Uh, I was thinking about maybe connecting connecting this guy up to the solenoid. Um, you know, for the most part, I think it runs at 99% duty cycle, and then only on those uh, transit conditions or some other conditions, the ECM commands that thing to to open or close, but you know, without actually knowing how the firmware is making that logic, those lot those decisions and the algorithms, uh, you know, if it's needing some other sensors that that I don't have, I might just not do that because it, it might not, you know, it might not it might be worthless. All right, so what's uh, flip this guy up on its on the back end here and get a look underneath? It's pretty dang heavy. Well, that's what she looks like under. And, you know, it looks, so right there is uh, where our PCV is going to go. I think I need to get that part still because uh, uh, the little pipe that goes in there to go to my catch can. Looks like someone back here is that little plug right there is where you drain the oil. I'm going to be doing that in a later video. These mating services on these on these intake ports, they need to be cleaned up pretty dirty. But overall, that looks pretty good. The other side of the supercharger is pretty good shape. So yeah, that's uh, it's not too bad for 40,000 miles and, and off eBay. All right, so um, yeah, basically just wanted to, uh, the purpose of the video is just do a uh, you know, quick visual inspection of the supercharger. I don't need to clean it up and you know, get it all look like new before we actually install it. But I'll keep it short and at that. And uh, thanks for, for joining me.